see everybody out tonight on this nippy night. But here to remember our Savior and all that he has done for us. We'll start our worship with the hymn that is found in your bulletin. Savior, when in dust to you. And we can all see it. Fill us with hope through the sweet victory. 
victory of Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us ask God's forgiveness for our sins and shortcomings this day. Hear now, O holy Lord, we bring our sins to you. We lie open in your sight. We are sinful people, and through our own fault we have done wrong against you and others, in our actions and inactions. Be patient with us, and forgive our sins, for the sake of our suffering Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continue our worship with the reading responsibly of the psalm, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and do not forget how kind he is. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He saves me from the grave and blesses me with love and mercy. He fills my life with good things so that I stay young and strong like an eagle. The Lord judges in favor of the oppressed and gives them their rights. He told his plans to Moses and let the people of Israel see his mighty acts. The Lord is merciful and loving, slow to become angry and full of constant love. He does not keep reprimanding. He is not angry forever. He does not punish us as we deserve or repay us for our sins and wrongs. As high as the skies above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins from us. As kind as a, fa as a father is to his children, so the Lord is kind to those who fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. Our Holy Gospel tonight is according to St. Matthew in the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going to a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed. My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us get, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 is but the fruit of the Spirit is joy, love, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
Welcome on the second Wednesday of Lent. Tonight we are going to look at the gift of patience. Last week it was gentleness. The patience of God is displayed in his forgiveness. His forgiveness to each of us. This is the bridge that leads to the requirement of patience for man. Man should not allow his anger to break forth, but he should restrain it, considering the work of God. <clears throat> Our gospel tonight is taken from Matthew. Matthew was concerned especially about connecting the New Testament to the Old Testament. His theme seems to be that Jesus the Messiah and the Savior of the world is the Christ that was promised to David and to Abraham before him. In our readings tonight, we see Jesus and the disciples entering the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane in Hebrew means olive press or all of that. Don't think it's a coincidence that Jesus is under pressure when he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He entered here with his disciples and he takes three of them with him, Peter, James, and John. And he goes a short distance away to pray. Here Jesus talks about his mental agony. He was not thinking only of the bodily pain that he was facing, but all of that had left, led up to his passion. What would soon be coming and what would succeed it? He was beginning to give himself to the punishment of sin, tasting death for every man, bearing in his own person the iniquity that the Lord had laid upon him, becoming sin on our behalf. He took on all of our sin. As a man, he yearned for the comfort of other men. Even though Peter, James, and John would not witness the extremity of his agony, Yet their proximity and sympathy and prayers would be a support. It did not seem to be too much for him to ask. He came back three times, three times and found them sleeping. The disciples' weaknesses or weakness was due to the weakness of the flesh. They had shown a certain readiness of spirit when they offered to die for Christ in verse 35. But the flesh the lower nature, blocked out the higher desire, checked the will and prevented it from carrying out what it really would have liked to do. Three times he told them to stay awake and pray, and three times they went to sleep. The prayers gave Jesus the courage that he needed. He spent time with his father, and I noticed that each time he prayed, it always was, thy will be done. He accepted his cup, his human will joined with the divine will, and he knew that his cup would not pass. Jesus abstained strength to submit, endure, and conquer. He had won the victory without their aid. His time of weakness is past, and he is prepared to face the worst. Jesus showed patience when he submits to suffering, and also when he reproves the sleeping disciples. The Spirit reminds us that we all have eternity to get our work done. Impatience is built into us as a human being. But we don't have to be discouraged. We can grow in patience because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Christ's patience with us enables us to be patient with God, with others, and with ourselves. He told his disciples to watch and to pray. In this time of our lives, are we watching and are we praying? Jesus did not give us an unreasonable request. In his terrible anguish, he craved the support of his friends. He does not ask us to do what he has not already done. And this is to watch that our will conforms to the will of God. Thy will be done. Yet we all have difficulty watching. Temptations to sin are strong. 
Our sinful flesh is weak and thus we lapse into indifference, cockiness, and spiritual sleep at times. Christ's patience in our scripture reading tonight encourages us to watch. There was no put down or bawling out of his disciples. Christ patiently suffered for them and for us in Gethsemane and on the cross, atoning for all of our failures. But Christ patiently supports us so that we can remain spiritually alert. It requires patience to keep watching against dangers that threaten our faith life. Patience is possible only in Christ. Fabre, the greatest naturalist who ever lived, began the main part of his work at 60 years of age. He was able to give all this time to it when he was 70, and he was discovered by fame at the age of 90. He had done all his work without a laboratory. All of his insects had been raised in old flower pots and sardine cans. He always referred to his two best instruments as time and patience. God tells us that he uses these two things in developing our spiritual lives. How many times are we told to wait upon the Lord? The flesh does not want to take time, but God does, because he is dealing with eternity. The fruit of the Spirit is patience. Lord, fill us with your patience. Amen. Our offering here is found on page 320. O oh God, our help in ages past. Three, two, zero. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness 
in realizing the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Produce in us the fruit of patience, O Holy Spirit. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient over it until it receives the early and late rain. You also be patient. Produce in us the fruit of patience, O Holy Spirit. And we exhort you, brethren, admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Produce in us the fruit of patience, O Holy Spirit. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Produce in us the fruit of patience, O Holy Spirit. Lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience for bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Produce in us the fruit of patience, O Holy Spirit. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the foremost of sinners. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in, in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Produce in us the fruit of patience, O Holy Spirit, as our Lord Jesus was patient with us. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we humbly entreat you for all sorts and conditions of people, that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, help those who call upon you in any need, that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and a happy issue out of their afflictions. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You are the children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. May Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is found on page 280, Now the Day is Over, 280.